them for 20 minutes or so. And the pattern that I uh, noticed from maybe six or seven years of doing that was that many of these highly successful people were very driven and not necessarily all the time very happy. Some of them were very happy, but some of them, the impression I got where they were somewhat tormented by their success. They were really striving to achieve something, but the joy in their life was lacking. They were almost um, neurotic about trying to achieve the goals. Not everyone, just some of them. And then there was, a, then I saw the other side where I saw people who seemingly had it all together, where they really had a great work-life balance and they had joy in their life. Uh, but then I also don't know, right? Because I interviewed Will Smith um, when he was promoting I Am Legend and I Robot, and this was all in the late 2000s. And I thought, man, there's a guy who seems so happy. He's got his stuff all together. And now with the context of the infamous slap at the Oscars a couple of Oscars ago, I can see that maybe, you know, he was just striving, striving, striving to be the best that he can be in the eyes of, other people, you know? And so, yeah. and again, I don't know the reality. This is just my impression, but I think, um, I think it, it didn't, for me, I think it didn't matter that people were celebrities as such. I think the statistics of how all of us human beings live our lives pretty much stay the same, irrespective of if you're a celebrity or not. Some people are tormented. Some people are, have joy in their life. Some people maybe don't know what's going on in their life. Okay. All right. So good stuff. And it, I mean, and it's interesting because I think that a lot of times from the outside looking in, we assume, oh, they have everything together. They're rich. And then you hear those interviews where those celebrities will say things like, you know, I got everything I wanted. Now what? And that just goes to show you that some money is not everything and success is not everything. And a lot of times, and even in those cases, which if we kind of tied into today's conversation, a lot of them don't have control over their lives as much as it seems because they have all these people running everything for them. They got this person doing this, that person doing that. And it's like they never really have time for themselves. And then sometimes they may find a vice or something. It's not always alcohol, but maybe it could be anything to kind of just let loose or release and even if we kind of correlate that with Will Smith, the whole slap thing, like, you know, and for, not saying that it wasn't, I guess, justified in a sense, but it, it was a lack of self-control and he lost it. And that just goes to show you the, even your favorites, just because they smile and grin on the stage and on the platform, don't necessarily mean they got it all together. So let's talk about as far as just being alcohol free as, and, and just how alcohol relates to mental health. So an impact on brain function and mental health disorders, it says long-term alcohol use and abuse can have severe effects on the brain function and potentially leading to mental health disorders. According to an article published in the Journal of Alcohol Research and Current Reviews, chronic heavy drinking is associated with many serious problems, including brain damage. The impairments can be associated with various mental health problems such as depression and antisocial personality disorder, among other things. The second one says sobriety and mental health improvement. Now, it 